How many are set for the word? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. We're going to go ahead and jump right in. Okay? Praise God. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this time. Thank you for this hour. Thank you for your presence here. Thank you, Abba Father, for your goodness in our lives. Thank you once again, Father, for the opportunity and the privilege to share, speak of your truth, speak of your person. And so, Lord, it is my prayer this morning that your word of truth finds lodgment in the hearts of the hearers this morning in the name of Jesus. Lord, that every heart will be able to latch on to the truth and grow thereby. I thank you for deliverance, healing, breakthrough, freedom represented in this room this morning, today, in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we give you all the praise, we give you all the glory. Holy Ghost, continue having your way. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We've been on a series, I have to state at this juncture that um, this was made clear to me in the week. Although I did say last week that it would be a, how many were here last week? That it would be a quick series. Not so, beloved. Because of what the Lord's continuing to open up and to show and it's imperative that I listen to him and I just continue just as he leads. Okay? So I want to, how do you put, how do you, how do I say this now? Just express at this juncture that we're going to continue on. Okay? And on my part, continue to open up just as he gives. Okay? And not put a time on that. Amen? Amen. Turn your Bibles, if you will, to the book of First Samuel and chapter 30. 1 Samuel in chapter 30. The title of the series is Fight the Fight. Fight the Fight. In this second installment today, I title it quite simply, Don't Give Up. Don't Give Up with an exclamation mark or an exclamation point after it. Don't give up. First Samuel in chapter 30, from verse one through six. Now it happened when David and his men came to Ziklag on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziklag attacked Ziklag and burnt it with fire and had taken captive the women and those who were there from small to great. They did not kill anyone, but carried them away and went their way. So David and his men came to the city and there it was burned with fire and their wives, their sons and their daughters had been taken captive. Then David and the people who were with him lifted up their voices and wept until they had no more power to weep. And David's two wives, Ahinoam, the Jezreelitess, and Abigail, the widow of Nabal, the Camelite, had been taken captive. Verse 6, now David was greatly distressed For the people spoke of stoning him because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and his daughters. But, 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 David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. But David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. 
quick background, real quick. David, in running away from Saul, King Saul, the king of Israel, for a season had gone into the land of the Philistines and camped there, had, as it were, a home away from home there. Okay, and there came a time where the Philistines rose up in war, in battle against the children of Israel. And Achish, who was their king, there was some sort of consort as between him and David because for the time, the year and a few months that David and his 600 men were there in Ziklag with Achish in battles and showing himself as were in support and all of that, it came to that point where, okay, battle against Israel. Achish said, no, based on what the generals, the Philistine generals are saying, you can't go with us. You and your men, even though you've proved yourself faithful in battle, you've got to go back. And so David and his men returned back to base, the home again away from home. And they come upon this scene. Ziklag burnt to the ground by the Amalekites. Verse 2. And had taken captive the women and those who were there from small to great. The Bible says they did not kill anyone but carried them away and went their way. The phrase, they did not kill anyone, is significant. Why? Because, why is that significant? Because, based on reading through the Bible, and particularly the Old Testament, it was customary, it was a manner, if you're not taken captive, what is happening as far as in war and in battles, in conquest? What happens is, it's total what? Destruction, annihilation, the killing of all in battle, after battle with the army, in destroying them, and taking the land, and taking the spoils. It's, it's the grown, it's the young, it's the men, it's the women, it's the young, the old, all together. But this is outlined specifically. It says, but, it says here in phrasing, in the phraseology, they did not kill anyone. And I just wanted to say a quick point in this as we go on this morning. And no matter how bad a situation or a condition or circumstances are, it's important. It is vital no matter how things may seem stacked up against you if I were to use human parlance or terminology there is know that there is something generally called I'll talk more about it a silver lining there is hope in sight. No matter how dark it is, there is light to be seen, there is light to be had, there's encouragement. I want to say, do you see it? In the midst of what you may be walking through, in the midst of what you may be going through, today, right now, and usually, mostly, it's never really just one thing. How many can bear witness to that? It's several things, left, right, it's, it's across board, all over. Do you have hope in the midst of it all? Recognize that in the midst of it all, there is reason. In the midst of the battle, in the heat of the battle, there is reason. There is reason to give God praise. To give God praise. To give God praise. The fruit of your lips. 
It calls for a shift in attitude, a shift in what you're beholding, a shift in what you're looking at, a shift in what you're seeing. Do you see the light? Do you still have hope? Are you thinking, contemplating about giving up? He says, oh, but pastor, you don't know what it is I'm walking through, I'm going through. It's dark out here. It's dim. I'm saying, you can. You can see positive in that. Understand that positive does not have to do with circumstantial. Even if it is you with your mouth, with your heart, with your lips, recognizing, realizing, understanding, for example, as even this may sound, it's your breath in my lungs. So I do what? Pour out my praise. Pour out my praise. It's your breath. His breath. His life within you. His life. God's life in your spirit. Born again as you are. Saved as you are. That is his breath in your lungs. And after everything that has assailed you, you are still here. You're still here. And as we'll see today, you're not just making it by the, how do you describe that? By the... <laughs> no! Some sit of your pants, skin of your what? No, 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 no. No, 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 no. In this fight, you see that something that a reoccurring decimal which you should avail and open your hearts to is that you have the victory it may not it may not seem like that it may not look like that hear me say this saints it may not feel like that but do you know that you have the victory Do you? Verse 3. So David and his men came to the city, and there it was burned with fire, and their wives, their sons, and their daughters had been taken captive. Have you ever found yourself in a situation or position where, as where you've lost, you've suffered the loss of all things, suffered the loss of everything? Or it feels like that, that you've suffered loss. Tremendous. Have you ever lost someone so close, so near, so dear to you? And the pain and the grief and the anguish that goes with that, that went with that. Are you in a place where the weight and the burden seems so heavy, heavy. I'll say it again, heavy on you. And in the midst of it all, you're not necessarily weeping. Maybe already in your situation, maybe you wept and wept and wept already, but right now you're not weeping. But there's anguish of soul. There's pain. And you're contemplating and you're thinking. It's crossing your radar, your mind, giving up. Calling it quits. Why? Because in you, inherent in you, it just feels like there's no strength, there's no power to fight on, to continue in the fight. You have no, let me use this phraseology, you have no fight left in you. Just as it says in verse 4, it says, Then David and the people who were with him lifted up their voices and did what? And wept. 
until they had no more power to weep. See that expression, and it's an expression of, it's so clear and so, it's so vivid. Hear me say this, saints. Saints, these were no, should I use the word, ordinary men. These were warriors. These were fighters. These were battle-hardened, should I say, experienced soldiers. They wept and wept and wept until they could weep no more. Exhausted. Tired. Anguish of soul. Pain. What a deep, profound picture. Just thinking about it. A loss in that way. Of all that you have, and it's not so much about things, also may touch on lies, may touch on people. I remember one time in my life, I in some ways wept like that. And like today I want to be honest, open, transparent with every one of you in sharing this in the course of this message and wherever this ends today. The year was 2014. The month was December. And it pertained to my beloved sister, so near and dear, the one after me, just separated by a month and maybe three months. I mean, a year and three months. Bosse. Who went to be with the Lord. In circumstances that can best be described as extremely painful. She had a five-year-old son at the time. And her and her husband were trying for, purposing to have another child. And there were complications with that. In what is known as an ectopic pregnancy. Where the baby is not in the uterus. But mostly in one of the tubes, fallopian, fallopian tubes. Hospital. Doctors trying. At the time, this is back home in Nigeria, and I'm here in the United States getting information, and for three days straight, just barely ate anything that Christmas. Praying, 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 praying the Spirit, standing in faith. And then got the news from my baby sister And my beloved of whom we're close growing up didn't, didn't make it. Passed on to glory. I'm in the basement in our home in Ann Arbor and I'm, I'm praying and I'm weeping. Actually, it goes beyond weeping. I'm wailing. Praying still that she would come out of that coma. When the news hit, at some point, I remained in tongues. Like I said, three days praying. I remained in tongues, and at some point, just fell back, collapsed on the floor in a sitting position, wailing, weeping. And it felt like the taste went out of my mouth. And it felt like, am I in this life, or am I in some alternate reality? This is not happening. Wookie got on the phone, called the pastors. And that Christmas, they dropped everything they were doing on the 27th and came over to our home, ministered the word, ministered in prayer, ministered consolation, encouragement to my heart, to our hearts.
with great encouragement by the word, by God's word, by a prophetic utterance, was I consoled. See verse 5, where we were in this portion. It says, And David's two wives, Ahinoam, the Jezreelitess, and Abigail, the widow of Nabal, the Carmelite, had been taken captive. In application, I'm saying this morning, whatever situation or circumstance, condition, or place in which you find yourself in the light of the challenges, in the light of the questions I asked a few moments ago about difficulties, about hardship, about issues, concerns with health and finances and debt and getting out of debt and all of that, long-standing issues. Realize and recognize the tendency. Realize and recognize the tendency for your peace to be taken captive. For your peace to be taken captive. What do you do in such a situation? What do you do in such a circumstance? What do you do in such a predicament? What predicament? And I flesh it out some more. Look at verse 6. Now David was greatly, exceedingly, what? That, that word greatly is the word exceedingly from the Strong's, from the Hebrew original. Exceedingly distressed. That is, in the midst of everything else that was going on as concerns loss, it says, for the people did what? Spoke of what? Stoning him. Because the soul of all the people was grieved, bitter, embittered, in deep grief. Every man for his sons and daughters. To be clear, this is not a case of, oh, let's get a few stones and chuck them at David so that he also can feel some of the pain that we're going through. Did you hear me say that? This is not a case of, oh, let's just take a few nice looking pebbles and throw at him. What were they saying? These were his men. 600, these were his men. What were they saying? In a nutshell, simply put, they were talking about doing what? Killing him. So his life was what? <laughs> Talk about being in danger. This is going beyond, okay, play thing. No, no, no. This is for real. For real, for real. His men were talking about killing him. This is real and present what? Danger. But what does, this, what does the text say about David? What David did? It says, but David did what? But David strengthened himself in what? In the Lord his God. When nothing was visible in Ziklag to look upon and to gain encouragement from or by, there was nothing. Someone say nothing. The whole thing burnt down to the ground. And people rising up. His people. Talking about it. When nothing was visible to say, ah! Sometimes you say, Pastor, I'm searching. I'm looking for a good spot. I'm looking for something encouraging in the midst of what I'm going through. I can't find. Ah! Because here, for the life right here, right now, in the culture. It's possible that you're trying to grasp. You can't, it's possible you don't necessarily see anything, feel anything, experience anything in which you can latch that hope in, confidence in, because in the first place, it shouldn't be based on what? Things that are what? Did you hear me say that? It says, while we look not at things that are what? But what? Unseen. Second Corinthians in chapter 4. And I'm looking at, it's, I'm saying you may search. Yeah, sometimes you're like, oh, okay, I can see that, that spot there. Okay, even though this is what I'm going through, well, at least I'm still able to do it. At least I'm still here. At least I can still walk. At least, and this and this and this. But what if you can't find anything? What if you can't? Then what? But David found strength. David found courage. 
in the Lord his God. When you look at that scripture, when you look at that portion, let's look at it. Here again, just as I said last week, we see that button to be activated in the fight. Who remembers what that button is? In this fight, what is it? What is it? But everything's looking bad. Everything's looking terrible. There's fear. There's danger. But David found strength, found courage. We see it activated. It's always a sharp contrast from what ought to be in humanistic terms. Because based on how things hit us in this life, then there is a way, according to the world, in which we ought to react. Oh, you should be feeling this way. Oh, you should be feeling this way. Oh, this is how you ought to be reacting to that thing that tries to do what? Attach to your body. And give you the prescription. It's a sharp contrast when you intentionally with... with laser beam like focus to say in the midst of it all activate but I will strengthen myself in who? in the Lord not in things not in things you hear me say not in things not in people the but is most visible when everything looks untoward looks contrary is stacked against you, unpleasant. How did David do it? How did he strengthen himself in the Lord? How? Thank you, prayer. Praise in song. I'm convinced, saints, that yes, there are things we can talk about and point to. I'm convinced it was based on Continual, continuous, steadfast, looking to and gaze on God. His God. Not looking to the things, not looking to how bad, not looking to how terrible, not looking to any of that. Focus on God. And that birthed in his heart and through his mouth, through his lips, Praise to the Most High God. When it gets real bad, real bad, and I've been there, Lord, I look to you. You're where my help comes from. I'm saying when it gets to that, when it, uh, should I use, I don't want to use the word critical, but Things happen in this life. And guess what? When, when, when the things occur, they don't, they don't aggregate all of us together. And say, okay, all of you together, now here's your challenge. As saints, as believers, as a body, as a church, it doesn't say, okay, all of you together, now this is the challenge. When things come, what you face, they're mostly what? what where, where does that occur? In your individual lives. With you in it fully and squarely. Are you strengthening yourself in the Lord? Are you taking courage from Him? Are you encouraged by Him? Oh, pastors, you need to say praise. Praise. Without wanting to say it, put it in this light, I'll say it this way. You know, it's kind of real easy sometimes and great when everything is kind of going good. When everything's kind of going well, it's kind of rosy. It's kind of working together for good. What about the moments when it's not? What about when things are tight? Real tight. What about when things, when you don't have, in a manner of speaking, the answers? 
Will you praise him? Will you give him praise from your heart without reservation, not holding back? Say, Lord, I praise you. Lord, I worship you. Lord, I honor you. And just in, in reckless abandon. Yeah, it's when it's hard. It's when it's hard. What are concerning your marriage? What are concerning your home and kids, the children, the spouse, your job, your business, your health, your body? your faith, and speaking your faith, and sharing your faith. Do you maintain good cheer? Like Jesus said. Do you realize and recognize, remember, I have overcome the world. And that you are in him, and that he is in you. Does that realization, and that taking that to heart, does it let Praise, pour out. Hebrews thirteen fifteen. Hebrews thirteen fifteen. By him, therefore, let us offer up the sacrifices of praise. The what? The fruit of what? Our lips, giving thanks unto his holy name. Look at what the psalmist said in Psalm forty two. Psalm forty two. We know it well. Psalm forty two. Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you disquieted or tumultuous on the inside, on the inside, tumultuous within me? Hope in God. Hope in God. For what? For I shall yet praise you. In other words, nothing in this world, nothing in this life is able to steal your peace to the extent that it stops you from praising God, from praising Abba, from praising your God. Doesn't matter what it looks like, doesn't matter what it sounds like, doesn't matter how the force of it is, you can't steal my praise. On the sands of time, it is too late to have my mouth sealed, to say, I, I want to praise, but I'm not going to. I, I want to praise, but, but I can. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Yes, you have what it takes. His spirit on the inside of you. How does it put it in Romans in chapter 5 verse 5? It says, and hope make it not ashamed. It says hope does not disappoint. Why? How? Because the love of God is the, what? Is shed abroad in our hearts. How? By his spirit who is given to us. So on the inside of you is the seed, is the life, is the kernel, is the Holy Ghost by whom you have the capacity to give him praise forevermore. <laughs> Meaning that it is not anchored or rooted or seeded in feeling. Attached to, predicated on, or based on circumstances. It's not. When I say you have what it takes, it's in your spirit. Will you choose to? The text says, David did what? Strengthened himself in the Lord. Next week, because of time, we'll get into the practical aspect of this. Because they say, hope in God, hope in God. Pastor, it sounds like, no, 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 no. There are specifics. There are, there, are, there are particulars in this. How do you work this out? Real life, real time. No, because the things we go through 
are real. We're not talking about hypotheticals here. Oh, what if this issue? No, 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 there are issues. <laughs> but you are what? An overcomer. You are a victor. You have the victory. This is the resolve we all have to have. This is the conclusion we have to have in our hearts. I will still praise him. I will yet praise him no matter what. Psalm 42, 6 says, Oh my God, my soul is cast down within me. I remember coming back from Nigeria after the burial of my sister. And I'd gone with a word, I received the word before going, gone with the word and prophetic and gave that to my mom, gave that to my dad, gave that to my family. Great encouragement by God's word and the light of all that transpired. And I came back, we're at the Marriott, I'm in the service and worship is going on. And I'm downcast in my soul. There's pain. I had questions for the Lord and I asked them those questions. You know, you know there are questions that we ask, right? That we ask. Right? Lord, why? Why is this happening? How come, Lord, I have not seen do, 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 fill in the blanks? Why is it you can talk about time and different, there are different things, many questions. Now we ask. In the midst of that, in that turmoil, in that pain, first step was to say, Lord, I'm setting purposefully, intentionally, hear me. Again, this is not automatic. This is not just, oh, it just happens. No, 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 no. You, 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 you have to intentionally, you have to purposefully say, I am going to set my heart on God. I'm going to set my heart on Abba. Why? This is, this is it. Why? Look at that framing once again. From verse 6, I believe it is. It says, but David strengthened himself in the Lord. It doesn't stop there, does it? Doesn't stop there. It says, David strengthened himself in the Lord. What? His God. Now, what is it? It's personal. It's that personal thing. Whereby, based on relationship and intimacy with God, you've entered into deeper reaches in Him. Whereby nothing moves you. You've tasted and seen that the Lord, the Lord is good. It's personal. That's what makes it that you're able to make that tilt. That you're able to make that turn. I say, I'm going to set my heart on you. Standing in that auditorium, I say, okay, Lord, all of this aside, I look to you. It is you my heart beats for. It is you my heart follows after. It is you I trust. For you to be able to say, for example, Shem strengthened himself in the Lord his God. Put your name in there. You strengthened yourself. You took great courage in the Lord. It's personal. How? Because here's the conclusion you must reach. Every believer, everyone born again, everyone who's a disciple of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Can I have a few minutes more, please? May I? You must come to that place. Hear me say this. You must come to that place where you conclude by way of determinate will, something definitive, that God is faithful. 
that it doesn't matter what the situation is, what has happened to you, who is against you, who's fighting you, who's undermining you, it does not matter. You must always be able to reach for that place in your heart based on, it doesn't come by, it's not a mental thing. It's a first spirit to spirit thing. It's a heart to heart thing. I wish I could go through the rest of the song. But your conclusion is that God is faithful and nothing can shake you from that conviction from that knowing that God is faithful if you can stay with that if you can keep your eyes on him in that way if you can look to him in that way then you're able to just have that tilt over what may be that hump what may be that battle what may be that difficulty what may be that hardship And why are you disquieted within me, tumultuous within me? Hoping God, hoping Elohim. For I shall yet praise him. You see the psalmist taking it again. Do you see like that was in verse, verse 5 and now in verse 11. Psalm 42, verse 11. Looks like he's going over it again because the challenges we face in this life, and it, sometimes it feels like it comes in what? In waves. Whether anxiety, fear, depression, pain, hurts, whatever it is, grief, almost like it's in ways, but on, without question, the response, you, me, we should have, should always be what? The same. God is what? Faithful. I put my trust in who? In him. I will not be shaken. For I shall yet praise him. That means to give him thanks from the Hebrew, to revert, worship with extended hands to worship him with extended hands you find that in the strongs here it is the help the word help is yeshua in the hebrew y-e-s-u-a primarily salvation deliverance health Salvation, deliverance, health. He's the help of my countenance. Your face, your visage, your disposition, your mind, your mindset, the heaviness, all of that stuff. He, simply put, is the answer. Are you strengthening yourself in the Lord? Are you? Can you and will you strengthen yourself in Him? It's a choice. And you have what it takes. You have what it takes. Again, it, it's not always going to be communal and whatnot. It's, your, it's intimacy with Him, the Lord of glory. Remaining there. Staying. Amen. Would you rise as I say something to you this afternoon? Rise up, would just, just stand, stand with me. Do not give up, don't give up in the fight. Don't give up, don't relent, don't stop. Do not cease. Thank you, Lord Jesus. After David strengthened himself in the Lord, what did he do? Then David said to Abiathar the priest, essentially David inquired of the Lord, shall I pursue, I'm going to close with this today, shall I pursue this troop? Shall I overtake them? The response of the Lord is instructive. I want to leave that on your hearts and your minds this afternoon. And he, the Lord said, you can go over this in your private time. And he, the Lord said, answered him, pursue, <laughs> for you shall surely what? overtake them and without fail recover all and without fail recover all so Lord said to someone this afternoon to you expressly and without fail you have the victory and shall recover all and then some 
because there's more, there's extra with him who is extraordinary. This is not, it's not. Peace for your heart, peace in your heart, peace in your mind, health in your body. Oh, I'm, at my, I'm advancing in age, I'm getting older and some things are creeping up and creeping in which don't belong. Which don't belong. ADD. Attention deficit disorder. ADHD. Deficit hyperactivity disorder. Every other disorder with your, with your bowels, with your stomach, with your head, with your body. Every in your heart. Recovery. Healing. Wholeness. Health in every way. Full restoration. Reconciliation in the family stakes and the issues. Rebounding. Can you speak concerning yourself this afternoon? Speak to that in that area. Speak to that area as far as Father, thank you for change. Thank you for breakthrough in those aspects. Father, thank you. Thank you for freedom, for release. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, I thank you for the healings represented in this room right here, right now. Father, I thank you. I give you praise for the breakthroughs represented in this room right now and the lives of your children. Father, I thank you for aspects of provision as it concerns finances expressly right now abounding to them what in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you. Thank you. Thank you for deliverance. Father, I thank you for shifts, dynamic, powerful shifts occurring right now in situations and circumstances that touch your children today in the name of Jesus. Thank you for strength renewed. Thank you, Lord, for vim, vigor, and vitality. Thank you all on the basis of eternal life on the inside. Father, thank you for your spirit who lives, dwells, reigns within. Thank you for the victory that is ours in Christ Jesus. Thank you. God, we love you. We say thank you. From the bottom of our hearts, from the depths of our hearts, we say thank you. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. As you leave today, expect. I didn't say that loosely as far as shifts in your lives. Powerful things in righteousness brought to bear in your very lives. I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm going to say it again. Powerful things in righteousness that bring about shifts occurring in your very lives. All to his praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a glorious week, everyone. Love you very much. Praise God. Yeah.